Well, hi guys. We've made it to my favorite day of the week. It's Friday. Hey, get ready for the Jump Ministry message of the day. The sun is up. You should be up and moving. Come on now. Let's have some fun. All right, kids. It's time to resume our study. And today's Friday. Happy Friday. My favorite day of the week. We're going to resume our study here about Saul about what it means to be a new creation. Remember he wrote those words in 2 Corinthians 5.17? Let's refresh our memory on this. At least I got the verse right this time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Okay, we're going to keep talking about that, and this will be our concluding message on that. Let's review where Saul has gone. Saul started out in the Bible here. He's mentioned standing there while someone was being hurt really bad. People were throwing rocks at him, remember? And uh, people who were doing this laid their coats down and had somebody watch them and keep them safe so nobody would steal them. And that someone was Saul. He was right there watching all this. He didn't stop it. Matter of fact, the Bible says he agreed with it. And then he got some letters to give him permission to go hunt the Christians down, followers of the way. That's what Christianity was originally called, followers of the way. And he's on his road. He's with a group of people. They're heading towards Damascus, and <laughs> light falls from heaven, and Jesus speaks to Saul. And as a result of that meeting, Saul lost his vision temporarily, and he was led to a town, and then a man named Ananias, we learned this yesterday, was sent to heal him, and to uh, confirm that God wanted him to do something. So Ananias does this. He lays his hands on him. I'll just read this. It's in chapter 9 of the book of Acts. Chapter 9, verse 17. Ananias went. This is after the Lord gave Ananias a vision. Entered the house. He placed his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road you were traveling has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's part of being a new creation, being filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Oh, that must have been marvelous. He must have been so worried. Am I going to be blind the rest of my life? And now he can see again, and what does he do? He gets up, and he got baptized. Isn't that what the Bible says? He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul was with the disciples in Damascus for some time. I already told you this, but we're going back over it. Immediately he began proclaiming Jesus in the synagogues. He is the Son of God. All who heard him were astounded and said, Isn't this the man in Jerusalem who was causing havoc for those who called on this name and came here for the purpose of taking them as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul grew stronger and kept confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. I told you, Saul was a really smart guy. And after many days had passed, the Jews conspired to kill him, but Saul learned of their plot. So they were watching the gates day and night, intending to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the wall. The city of Jerusalem is surrounded by big walls. And there were gates all over the place. And people who didn't like hearing what Saul was teaching tried to kill him. And so his buds, his disciples, his, his students, it says his disciples. So now we got some people who are following Saul. Interesting, isn't it? When people hear truth, they'll start following. And they saved him by lowering him down in a basket so he could get out of the city. Because people didn't want to hear him and they were going to try to kill him now. Like they had killed Stephen. You don't hear much about Saul. And here's what I told you about. Oh, if you look uh, in, in Jerusalem, the, his story, you, you learn a whole bunch about him at first, and then you don't hear too much about him. And then you hear he's getting ready to go in the mission field. Listen to this. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him since they did not believe he was a disciple. Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that the Lord had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. 
Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He conversed and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers found out, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Very interesting. So the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. This church is taking off. All right, and here's Saul, right with the original leaders of the church. And he's boldly speaking about Jesus now. He's not afraid of anything. Okay. Now the story shifts over and you don't hear much about Saul. Until you come around chapter 13. Chapter 13 is a changing point in uh, something about Saul. A lot of people think Jesus changed Saul's name on the road to Damascus. That's not true at all. Saul was a Jewish name. It was a Hebrew name. It was actually a name of a king, in the, the Jewish king, Saul. One of the first kings, the first king. That's right. The very first king was named Saul in Jerusalem. And so Saul might have been named after him. It was a name of royalty. But... Paul was being, excuse me, Saul was being sent to talk to people who were not Jewish. And so what he did was he used his Gentile name. And we're going to see this in a second. Because the Bible doesn't say when he changed his name. Well, he never really changed it. He was still Saul and Jesus called him Saul. Jesus didn't call him Paul. He called him Saul. This is important for you to learn this because a lot of people get confused and think when that lightning came down and, and Jesus talked to Saul that he changed his name that day. And that's not the case at all. Listen to here. I'm in chapter 13. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Maninan, a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. It's the same Saul. As they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after that, after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. And this is a cool story. I'm going to show you how brave Saul was. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Arriving in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in Jewish synagogues. They also had John as their assistant. So now the team's up to three, Barnabas, John, and Saul. When they had traveled the whole island as far as Pathmos, Pathos, Pathos, I can't speak this morning, they came across a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was in the pro-council. He was with the pro-council, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, that is the meaning of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. What's going on here? You got the team of three now, Barnabas, Saul, and John, and they're sailing around an island. They're going all over the island telling people about God and explaining things about Jesus. And they come across this evil sorcerer. This was someone who worked magic. You know, and he was trying to get the government leader who was there also. He's trying to get him to not listen to Saul and Barnabas and John. All right, and watch this. Verse 9. But Saul also called Paul. This is the first time you read that Paul is now the name he's going by. But Saul also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared straight at Elymas and said, You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery, you son of the devil. Ooh, and enemy of all that is right. Won't you ever stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? Now look, the Lord's hand is against you. You're going to be blind and will not see the sun for a time. Immediately a mist and darkness fell on him. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then, when he saw what happened, the pro-council believed because he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. That's a lot of words I read to you. But I wanted to show you that Saul now started using his name, his, his Gentile name, his non-Jewish name of Paul. And being full of the Holy Spirit, 
he went right up against somebody who was trying to stop the word of God from getting out. He called him a son of the devil. And then he said, now the Lord's hand is on you. And you're not going to be able to see. And it happened immediately like this. Well, that government official who was watching all of this going on, all of a sudden he started really paying attention. He goes, this must be real. You let, tell me more. The pro council believed. It said he believed. So I believe he was saved right there. Somebody who had never heard about Jesus, never really paid attention to any of this, and he saw some stuff go on and said, wow, I believe. Now, do you see how bold Saul, who's now going by the name Paul, see how he's a new creation? It wasn't just a few short weeks ago he was killing Christians and, and trying to get them locked up in jail. And now he's going around into the Jewish churches and he's preaching about Jesus. He's a new creation. And see how the people didn't believe it at first? But it took a friend coming along named Barnabas. So see, sometimes people aren't going to believe us and they don't want to hear us when we're talking about Jesus. And that's why it's good to have a buddy with you so you can encourage each other. Because telling people about Jesus sometimes is kind of hard. And some people don't want to hear it. But we need to encourage each other. And I'm so encouraged to say that we're going to be gathering in church this Sunday. For the first time in many weeks. I don't know if mom and dad are coming. Or if you're coming. I hope you do. And if you can. And we're going to be safe. We're going to be wearing masks. And we're going to be very, uh, very, very careful. But I'm going to be speaking again about new birth. And about what we've talked about here. Because we should be hearing this a lot so we can think about this and be encouraged by this. All right, well, let's have our incredible devotion. I think I'm going to use a new camera and we're going to go outside. I'm going to try something a little different. So I'll be right back. Bye-bye. Okay, we've moved outside. It is warm out here, isn't it? Cool? Yeah, it's hot. It is hot out here. It must be in the 80s and it's humid. And we turned on the air conditioning for the first time, and praise the Lord, it didn't come on right away. And I had to go out there and play with it a little bit, but it started working. So the house has gotten cool, and Miss Cricket's happy, and the dogs are all curled up now, sleeping by the vents. So they have really thick fur, don't they? So they get really hot really quick, so we have to turn the air conditioning on for them. Today we're going to talk about which way does the wind blow. And that's from our indescribable book, and this is an interesting verse, isn't it? You want to read it for me? Uh -huh. Okay. Stand strong. Do not let anything move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. You know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. That was pretty good, Corey. I think he got every word right, didn't he? I was trying to see around him. I was watching while he was reading it. Standing strong. Not letting anything move us. I wonder what this is going to be about today. Wind. It's about wind. Wind can be mysterious, even alarming. You can't see it, but you know it's there when it brushes across your face and, or makes the leaves shake, right? And you can hear it coming as it howls through the trees. But what is wind? That's an interesting question. Have you ever thought about that? What is wind? And what makes it blow? Wind is simply moving air. Hmm. That movement is caused by differences in the air pressure. Which, is, which are caused by differences in temperature. Warm air has a lower pressure and it wants to go up. It wants to rise. Okay. As it rises, cooler air, with its higher pressure, moves in and takes its place. This movement of warmer or cooler air is what creates wind. Now, I am probably... That's probably the first time I've heard that. I never really thought about it. I know wind and I love flying kites and everything, but I've never thought about it being warm and cool air changing places with each other. Winds like the trade winds near the equator and the polar winds at the north and south poles almost always blow the same way. That's interesting. But local winds can change directions several times a day depending on what's happening in the weather around them. People can be like the wind sometimes. They change their direction, what they say and how they act. Hmm, depending on what's happening around them or who's standing nearby. Do you do that? Do you change depending on who's around you? Hmm, do you say whatever other people want to hear? Hmm, or do you change the way you act, even doing something you know is wrong just to fit in 
No. Okay. Don't do that. God doesn't want you to change direction like the wind. Instead, stand strong for what you believe. Stand up for what's right. And stand up for God. People may laugh or make fun of you or even worse, but remember that when God is on your side, no one can stand against you. And that's in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. You know what? I may repeat this on Sunday, because this is good to hear. You stand strong for what you believe in. That's right. Lord, when everyone around me seems to be changing like the wind, help me stand strong and stand up for you. I praise you because you never change. That's really a good thing to think about on a Friday, every day, matter of fact. You know, Cape Blanco in Oregon, that's a state, it's out west. It's one of the windiest places on earth. Strong winter storms often create winds that roar through the area at more than 100 miles an hour. But the honor of the windiest spot in the world belongs to Port Martin. And this is a place, it's an abandoned research base in Antarctica. Winds there blow at an average 40 miles an hour every day of the year. Can you imagine 40 mile an hour winds all day long? Or my flag over here on the pole, see it, Corey? Ah, that wouldn't even stay up there, would it? It'd rip all up, and my camper down there would blow over. And what about poor Penny Pig? She would blow away, too. No. Yeah, poor Penny. No. Oh, poor Penny Pig. If it was 40 miles an hour, we couldn't even sit out here, could we? Because this tent that we're under would blow away. Well, you know what? It's Friday. There's a lot to get done. We have ch church coming up on Sunday. We have jump. We're going to have a special song up in the front of the church for you. And, uh, wow, what else is going on? Oh, Miss Cricket and I are going to get some crabs. We're going to go get some crabs up at the seafood store. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I love you. Have a great weekend. And I hope I see some of you all Sunday morning. So let's pray and thank the Lord for this warm day we have. Look, the sun just came out, Corey. Oh, it's so beautiful down here. Father, thank you. Thank you for the bird that's singing right over my shoulder. Thank you for all the beauty around us. Thank you for another day we can wake up and study your word and just uh, realize all the blessings that are around us. Keep my friends and family members safe. And Lord, please let them know they are loved and that we will be hopefully gathering very soon in church together to hear our pastor and the message he has. So we're looking forward to that, Lord. Keep us safe this weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you later, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you for being here today. Bye-bye now. Bye. <laughs>